The history of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Rock Island District is one that can be traced back to 1837, when a Lieutenant Robert E. Lee surveyed a portion of the Mississippi River. That Lieutenant Lee, the same who would later famously become a Confederate General and Commander of the American Confederate States Army during the American Civil War, surveyed the Des Moines Rapids above Keokuk, Iowa, and the Rock Island Rapids, which ran from LeClaire, Iowa, to Rock Island, Illinois. These two areas were the most serious obstacles on the Mississippi River, and virtually halted steamboat traffic during low river stages. Lieutenant Lee proposed improvements on these two stretches by excavating rock to deepen the channel, and work was authorized in 1852. In 1866, after the Civil War ended, Congress authorized the Corps to plan and construct a lateral canal known as the Des Moines Rapids Canal along the Iowa side of the river to bypass the rapids. The new canal was 7.6 miles long, five feet deep at low water, and had three locks. The canal cost more than $4 million and marked the official birth of the Rock Island District. On August 3, 1866, under the guidance of Lieutenant Colonel J.H. Wilson, the Rock Island District office opened in Keokuk, Iowa, to supervise construction of the Des Moines Rapids Canal, which eventually opened to traffic in 1877. In 1869, the Rock Island District Office was moved to Davenport, Iowa to oversee work on removing the Rock Island Rapids. In 1870, the Rock Island District Headquarters was moved once again from Davenport to Rock Island, Illinois. As the district then stretched from St. Paul, Minnesota to St. Louis, Missouri, Rock Island was considered the ideal geographic location. From the late 1870s to the early 1900s, Congress authorized several comprehensive projects on the Mississippi River to accommodate commercial traffic. The first project created a four and a half foot channel by using a variety of techniques including dredging, constructing rock and brush wing dams along the shore, and building closing dams which closed off sloughs and secondary channels to divert more water into the channel. In 1907, a six foot channel was authorized by Congress as commercial vessels were increasing in size. By 1925, despite improvements to the river, commercial navigation declined. Vessels larger than pleasure boats had become almost a curiosity. Other modes of transportation, such as the railroad, were taking over. But new advancements in engineering knowledge and techniques brought about the rebirth of water transportation. New ideas in lock and dam construction were being tested and proven. Another important aspect was the development of diesel-powered river vessels that greatly increased power and efficiency, capable of pushing a dozen or more heavily laden steel barges. In 1930, convinced that the economy of the Midwest would improve by a deeper channel that would accommodate these larger tows, Congress authorized the nine-foot navigation channel from the mouth of the Missouri River to Minneapolis, Minnesota. This was done by means of creating a staircase of sorts, using 28 locks and dams between the Missouri River and Minneapolis, with 12 of these locks built by the Rock Island District. In the 1930s and 1940s, construction of the locks and dam engaged almost all of the district's efforts. The first of the series was Locks and Dam 15 at Rock Island, Illinois, which was completed in 1932. The final piece came in 1940, with the completion of Lock and Dam 14 near LeClaire, Iowa. In 1932, during the busy Lock and Dam construction period, the historic Clock Tower building, located on Rock Island Arsenal, adjacent to Locks and Dam 15, became the district's permanent home. Also during this time, the St. Louis and St. Paul districts were established which reduced the boundaries of the Rock Island District to the portion between the Wisconsin and Illinois rivers. In 1936, the Rock Island District was further reduced to its present-day north-south boundaries of Gutenberg, Iowa in the north and Saverton, Missouri in the south. In 1936, Congress made flood control a federal concern and assigned the responsibility of carrying out its directives to the Corps of Engineers. Based on this new directive, the Rock Island District had 14 individual flood control projects that were included in the first round of legislation. From 1942 to 1945, at the outbreak of World War II, the Rock Island District shifted from civil works to military supply and procurement. 
It also designed and constructed more than $80 million in military projects during this time. After World War II ended, the district returned to civil works planning and construction and began to refocus on the flood control mission. That mission would result in the construction of five reservoirs, with the first project completed at Fond du Lac Reservoir in 1949, followed by the Farmdale Reservoir in 1951. Fond du Lac and Farmdale are part of the Farm Creek Flood Control Project in East Peoria, Illinois. Behind each dam, the Corps of Engineers owns the land that is subject to flooding. These areas will normally be empty of standing water. Farm Creek and Fond du Lac Creek flow through a culvert in the respective dams. When the flow in the creek exceeds the capacity of the culvert, water starts to back up into the reservoir area. The stored water is then released at a slow rate through the outlet culvert. One advantage of the dry reservoir concept is there are no moving parts. The water is held back and released automatically without the need to open or close gates. Continuing with the flood control mission, the Rock Island District completed three more reservoir projects in the state of Iowa. One at Coraville Lake in Iowa City in 1958. Another at Lake Red Rock in Pella, Iowa in 1969. And finally, Sailorville Lake in Johnston, Iowa in 1977. All three lake projects are multiple purpose projects, providing primary benefits in flood control and low flow augmentation with secondary benefits in recreation, natural resource management, and environmental stewardship. Since being built, the three lakes combined have prevented cumulative flooding damages of over $2.5 billion in the downstream areas. In 1980, as a result of a core-wide district realignment study, all river-related responsibilities of the Chicago District were transferred to the Rock Island District. This change brought six rivers, the Illinois, Chicago, Fox, Des Plaines, Kankakee, and Sangamon, as well as eight lots and dams on the Illinois Waterway to the Rock Island District. Years later, in 2020, another realignment would transfer operations of the T.J. O'Brien and Lockport Locks and Dams back to the Chicago District. River navigation is an integral facet to commercial transportation. The Rock Island District has been proud to help facilitate the navigation which drives a global economy. But rivers are more than just transportation systems. The Mississippi River watershed is the third largest in the world and is an environmental treasure like no other. Congress recognized the Mississippi River system as a nationally significant ecosystem with the passing of the 1986 Water Resource Development Act. WERDA of 1986 established the Environmental Management Program which is known today as the Upper Mississippi River Restoration Program, or UMRR. The Rock Island District has been proud to lead that program for 30 years, completing nearly 60 projects and restoring nearly 110,000 acres of habitat. The program is world-renowned for its commitment to environmental restoration. Preserving and protecting the environment is imperative to the Rock Island District but we are also dedicated to protecting people and property from the unpredictability of mother nature. Our emergency management mission has had us respond to catastrophic events like the Great Flood of 1993, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in 2005, record-breaking flooding on the Des Moines, Rock, Illinois, and Mississippi rivers in 2008, Hurricane Sandy in 2013, as well as more record-breaking flooding on the Illinois River in the same year, and, most recently, the record-breaking flooding on the Mississippi River in 2019. Throughout all of these events, the Rock Island District was prepared to help communities with technical expertise and flood fight materiel. In 2006, the district became recognized as a regional flood fighting center, and in 2014, it was designated as the National Flood Fight Materiel Center with the ability to provide sandbags, polyethylene sheeting, flood pumps, flood fight products, and technical support to districts throughout the continental United States. The Rock Island District has had a rich history of providing value to the nation through a variety of engineering services. As we look to the future, our people are prepared to adapt to an ever-changing landscape 
and take on each mission with the utmost professionalism, expertise, and ingenuity.